start your new year off with a bang. Yes, baby, that's right! As PBA legend Pete Weber tries to make it back to the finals of the PBA World Championship, the first major of the season. The 49-year-old has his work cut out for him as he faces a trio of hard-throwing young guns that includes Sean Rash, the number one overall seed in this year's World Championship. Can PDW survive and continue his quest for another major? Find out next. Happy New Year from Las Vegas, and glad you're ringing in 2012 with the PBA. Today we'll determine the third of four finalists for the season's first major, the PBA World Championship. Making his first career TV appearance, the man who runs the show with his number 10 jersey, Nathan Moore. He is a three-time All-American from Wichita State. The lefty from Cheektowaga, New York. Say hello to Ryan Simonelli. Ryan is the only southpaw to make it to the top 16 here at the World Championship. He's won this title twice. The legendary B D W Pete Weber. Simply put, Rob, one of the best ever. And your number one overall seed, Sean Rash. Making his second telecast here at the WSOB. Get used to seeing a lot of this man. Going to take a look at the rules again. The eliminator format. All four guys bowling. Low score. Hits the showers. Match number two. The remaining three. Same deal. And only one will advance to the finals. A little bit earlier, Sean Rash. Handing over a jersey to eight-year-old Dan McCarty, who suffers from brittle bone disease. The two of them united throughout the opening ball. Yeah, there you go, Randy getting involved. And not bad. I was kind of hoping for 10 in the pit, Randy, but still good assistance. And Dan McCarty, uh, part of the Las Vegas chapter of Best Buddies. He and his family had a limo ride here. They're going to hang out here. I mean, what a seat he's got. Uh, he, he has a better view than we do. Yes, he does. Bob Stone, Randy Peterson, and last year's PBA World Champion, Chris Barnes with you. Today's oil pattern, the same as last week. It's the Scorpion, picked by the highest seed bowling today, and the number one overall seed in the World Championship, Sean Rash. But the first man to throw a ball in this new year, Pete Weber. 2-8, uh, double wood left by PD Dub, and Weber, the elder statesman here in this quartet of players, the next oldest player to Pete. 31-year-old Nathan Bohr, who was born in 1980, guys. The same year Pete Weber was named PBA Rookie of the Year. I've been bowling all my life. I didn't go to college because I wanted to be a professional bowler, so I came straight out of high school to the tour, and I've been bowling. This is my 32nd year, and it means everything in the world to me. Uh, I can't think of a other life that I'd rather have than being a professional bowler. Pete, not exactly a spring chicken anymore at age 49, but he still has game. I'm not going to say that to his face, I'll tell you that. Rash on the right. Oh, great kick of the 10. Hey, Chris, how many times have you started a match with a pocket 7-10? It's kind of like getting kicked right in the teeth, isn't it? <laughs> I tend to wait to like the fifth or sixth frame, actually. Oh, when you really need it. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> and job is creating opportunity where there is none. Sure. Weber takes care of the spare. I made a spare. I've said it before, I'm going to say it again. I, I always have a little extra hop in my step when PDW is on the show. I get downright excited. I know you do. I, I, I just love that guy. I love his personality. I love everything he brings to life in bowling. Here is Nathan Bohr, a native of Wichita, Kansas. Got a couple shockers on the show here, Bohr and Rash. Interesting strategy. He's going to play out. That is way out, and it works. Barnsley, do you like that strategy? You know, I don't mind it for this very reason. It's his first show. He's got two power guys playing the lanes inside of him. I don't think he's as good as either one of them from in there. I think this gives him his best chance to win. Maybe not his best chance to advance, though. They could go either way in a hurry on him. 
That was Ryan Simonelli, the lefty. An opening strike. Lives in Cheektowaga, just outside of Buffalo. Great bowling community in Cheektowaga and the entire Buffalo area. Rash on the left. A nice little pace going here. So Rash spares strike. Pete Weber, eight spare in the first. Here he is in the second. Slick back. Got the shades. Digging the shades. Got the glove, the look. It was funny. I was talking to Pete the other day, and he said, you know, I'm tired of wearing this black hat. I'm tired of being the bad guy in the PBA. He said, let, let Rash have it. Let, you know, I'm, I, I, it's time for me to be the nice guy and be embraced and loved. I tell you what, a lot of people love Pete Weber and what he does. Ryan Simonelli's reaction. Well, you either love him or you hate him, but you Certainly love watching him. That's a fact. Few people more fun to watch than him. It's like he set that one a little short, caused it to kind of hook early on him. Wiggle there. Yeah, it's just touchy out there, and it's going to be it's going to be hard to control that along with all the nerves he's going to have going on with his first show. Simonelli strikes spare, and getting back to four guys. It's his first show here, but what is Nathan's first love? Turns out it's meteorology. It's just something that's always fascinated me. Uh, even the last, even the last couple of years, I've, I've contemplated going back to school and, and working towards, uh, towards that goal. Um, but um, I, I'm trying to remember when it was. I was really young, uh, standing outside of my house in, in Austin with my parents, and a uh, tornado or a funnel cloud went right over the top of our house. And that's the only thing I can point to that would say. That's where the, that fascination uh, would have begun. Moore picks up the spare, and the storm staffer is so fascinated with weather and tornadoes that he and his mom are planning to do, guys, a little storm chasing a la Twister in the spring. Here's Weber starting the third, working on a double. He still has great touch. You know, he's always had that great release and, and undoubtedly probably one of the best physical games ever. Spare strike for Rash. Back to back jacks for Sean Rash. Well, I really like his look on this pair, too. There's not anybody with enough rev rate to chase him off that spot. If he can follow himself all the way through, he's almost got the same advantage Simonelli does. Hey, he selected the pattern. Didn't work out very well for Smallwood last week. Now, last week, Smallwood picked the same exact pattern and was eliminated in the first game. It, but it wasn't because he didn't bowl well. Exactly. That's a great point, because Couple of shots, both of them probably should have been four pins. They both turn into four nines, and what looked like a pretty easy first game for him turned into a train wreck. Everybody striking out in the third. Weber and Rash tied for the lead. Low man out, the conclusion of match number one when this New Year's Day version of the PBA returns to Vegas. The PBA World Championship is brought to you by Budweiser. Great times are waiting. Grab some buds. By Bear. Try Bear Advanced Aspirin. Extra strength pain relief twice as fast as before. By DB8. We are DB8. Tonight we bowl. And by the USBC and its 2 million members. To find out more about the USBC, log on to bowl.com today.
Welcome back to the Petraglia Division of the PBA World Championship here at South Point Casino and Exhibition Hall in Las Vegas. Let's recap who's made it into our January 15th World Championship Finals so far. Week one, the Carter Division, captured by Oscu Palermo, the number five overall seed, survived against Jack Jurek, Stuart Williams, and Dom Barrett. Week two is the Hardwick Division, where Ryan Schaefer came out on top as the number 14 seed. He knocked off Ildemaro Ruiz, Andres Gomez, and the number two overall seed, Tom Smallwood. So those two have moved on to the World Championship Final in two weeks, and that means there's two spots remain. One to be filled by today's Petraglia Division winner, and next week's survivor in the Albi Division, which just so happens to feature number three overall seed, Jason Belmonte, the number one seed here at the World Championships, yeah, you're looking at him. That guy, Sean Rash, the man who absolutely dominated the qualifying rounds here. <laughs> Rash with the four-bagger. Much to the delight of that little guy, Dan McCarty. Here's Sean with more on his style. Well, I'm aggressive. I mean, it's an individual sport, and the only person that cares about you up there is your family. Um, you know, great examples when Pete and I bowl against each other or with each other is uh, you know, we're, we're there for ourselves. You know, you can't focus on them and you can't worry about what they do. And, you know, you want to see others succeed, but you want to see them finish a spot below you every day. Weber trying to keep it all even with Rash here in the fourth. <laughs> P, D, Dub, another strike. Ooh. This drift's just a pinch high, but all 10 go down, and it sometimes it's not how, it's how many. Simonelli on the left lane. He went nine spare there last time, <laughs> blows up the rack here. And we're having a strike fest, gentlemen. Just about as opposite Pete as you can get. Pete at 16.8 miles an hour. Ryan Simonelli, 21.6. Yeah, he just rears back and fires. Hit it as hard as you can and throw it hard. Two ways to be a star on tour. Do everything extremely well, or do one thing better than everyone else. He's starting to become real good at that thing. Half the ball was in the right gutter, Rob Stone. I mean, he is dancing with the devil. Dude, this is not a bad play by him. This is out to the, the first board, literally. And we've seen first, first no board? one play out there. Maybe the half. Like the first eighth of the board. <laughs> yeah, not a lot of margin for error to the oh. right. <laughs> Onions. Looking for four in a row. Come on, Pete. Yeah. Give it to me. Bam. Yeah. <laughs> Hairbone. <laughs> Woo. <laughs> I am now going to retire from the PBA booth. Rob has just left the booth. It's up to you and I, Chris. John Rash with a strike of his own. And you wonder why I love Pete Weber so much. You guys have this thing going oh on. Oh my gosh, do we? It is unbelievable. It's like this man love, this this secret connection. It's a little tabooish, I'll admit. Yeah. <laughs> Four. One thing I like about what Nathan's doing though is he's playing to his strengths. He's the best straight player on this out of this group. I mean, but he I has don't think it's the easiest thing to do. He has me holding his breath every time he releases that shot. I mean, that is. We just don't see that a lot anymore. No, no. You know, every, seems like every telecast, they start. You know, Simonelli is just destroying racks. They start a little bit straighter around second arrow, in between second and third arrow, and by the last match, they're lofting the gutter cap. Rarely do we see players playing outside first arrow and it's all to do with the oil patterns that are laid down. Well, I thought up in the bowling center itself, it had a lot to do with, it's a high lineage center. South Point does a ton of, of leagues in open play. It's tough to be right of that. Here, though, it's a fresh surface. Through five, guys, we have yet to see an open frame, not even anything close. We haven't even seen a split. 
Rash, Weber on top, Simonelli, and then four. There's Weber looking for five in a row as we begin the sixth. Sure. Yeah, it was. Boy, he hit the foul line so solid on that shot. He's really starting to dial in. See if he can maintain it. Five in a row for Rash. 2012 is getting off to a nice start in PBA land. Good move. You pull a lot with Sean Rash. How quickly do the lanes transition when crossing with him? Pretty fast. He likes to use a little surface. He uses a ton of speed and that 500 plus RPM rev rate moves the lanes. He'll probably have to move at least a couple during this game, maybe three. And just off his own ball. Strike there for Boer. Low, but had a long time to recover. So Chris, when you're behind Sean Rash, how often do you make adjustments? How soon do you move? If I go to his pair from the very first frame, I'll, I'll move in two, three, maybe four boards. Yeah. Off, baby. In nice. this environment here, you're bowling with him. How often do you move? Probably every other frame I move a half. Every other frame you move a half a board with your feet? With my feet. Okay. And then half of that with my eyes. So when I make the when I get to one, then I probably parallel it in at least a half, maybe a full board. Every other frame you're moving. Yeah. Okay. Rash looking for six straight. And that's something that's really improved in Sean's game is how well he hits the line now. He used to have a four step approach. We used to call it a five because of the step he took after he threw it. Now he hits <laughs> it solid and he has been on it throughout this World Series. Weber also looking for a six pack here. Got a hook. Oh. 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 Pete and Sean are setting the tone here. Simonelli looking for five strikes in a row. Ah, he, he, he's destroying pins. Yeah, I'm afraid, although Nathan played to his strengths a little bit by not playing where everybody else is, he's got a distinct disadvantage with how much room he has to miss on the lane. He doesn't have the same firepower. And doesn't look like he can string the amount of strikes necessary for playing that part of the lane. Nathan's family in attendance. Mike and Cindy. Come on, be right. Carry. Yeah. Come on. He's fighting though. He's working hard. He is, and at 21 pins behind Simonelli, he's just one hit away from being in this match. So Bohr trails Simonelli by 21. The top three will move on to match number two. Rash and Weber are going back to back with their strikes. PD Dub looking for seven in a row as we begin the eighth. <laughs> it's fun to watch. Got away with just a little small air there. He just wasn't, didn't flow quite as well as the last couple. You didn't see the PD, he saved it. You didn't see the PDW traditional open hand uh, follow through. His, his hand was a little closed on that shot. Yeah, I thought so, but that's part of what makes him a great player too. He, he has such great touch that he took a shot that most people might have two tend and turned into a strike. Come on! Ooh. That pin came from Reno trying to knock it down. <laughs> well, and that wasn't Sean's best effort either. We talked about how good he's been hitting the line. He came off of that one a little bit, got it inside a target, almost held. I think of the past we've seen with Sean, he tends to get a little overexcited, a little overamped, and then he starts throwing. 
starts rushing shots and throwing. But you got to think this four-man format at the outset, a nice way to kind of calm him down because he has the time. He's forced to sit and relax. Look at this, I and mean, just look how close he is to dropping this in the gutter. That's really good stuff. Simonelli just methodically oh. knocking him down. And for those folks at home watching, Chris and I both invite you to play the one, two, three board at your leisure and see how good you are at it. <laughs> And you can try that on this exact oil pattern at any bowling center that offers PBA experience leagues. I think if Sean has one bugaboo, he tends to drop it into his swing a little earlier. He gets ramped up, drops it in, chases after it, and then it just gets going so quick that it's hard for him to catch it enough to make up for the extra speed. Pete Weber opened this one up with an eight spare. Since then, seven consecutive strikes, looking for eight in a row. The Dick Van Patten, eight is enough. Oh, no. Man, are you pulling straws now, brother. I'll tell you what, we have the possibility of Nathan Bohr striking out and shooting 259. And won't even be close to being enough. And not making it. Simonelli. Yeah, another one. He's a machine. The stormtrooper. Step up, throw strike. Step up, throw strike. The, one, the thing about guys that go all in every shot, it makes them a little bit pressure proof. There's not, you can't throw it harder. You can't grab it more. Now, pressure's on Nathan Bohr right now. He's got three in a row. Needs a four bagger here just to continue to try and stay within the reach of these big guns here today. Get, carry, carry, yeah. He got that on, in and it laid there and went dead flush. So he's got a little bit of room out there. He's also throwing it really well. Actually, up by the Cats, he's playing that that lane in a couple of boards from the right lane where he's actually trying to get it out to about the second board. Nathan's still 10 out of that third spot. Top three move on. Weber needs a mark to advance. Nine in a row for PD Dub. Important shot for Sean. If he doesn't strike on this ball, he could be eliminated. We see this a lot from Sean. Things aren't just right. And that head maybe starts getting a little chatty inside. Right. Time to pull out. The demons start uh, creeping up. If he goes spare strike, he shoots 249. Bork can shoot 259. His new wife, Sarah, sitting alongside Sean's dad, Gene. Weber already securing a berth in the next match. Nice game for the old guy. <laughs> 279 action, Rob. Sean's pace on that first shot in the 10th was excellent. Didn't get in front of himself. Let's see if he can do it one more time to advance. Come on, Sean. Nope. Oh. Hands went to the head immediately. Of course, the ball's got to hit back here. Match one in the books for Pete Weber. Thank you. Come on up. Oh, sorry. 279. Rash takes care of the spare. 257 for Rash. 
Bork can strike out for 259. Simonelli can go nine spare nine for 258. Oh, Lee Cow. How'd you bowl? Shot 257. Oh, that's great. Nope, I got knocked out. Bohr must strike or he's done. Read it. Read it a lot. Here. Yeah, come on. Oh, are you kidding me? On your first show in the 10th frame, to get it to the first board when you need it most. Yeah, it's pretty impressive. It's a great shot. Simonelli moves on. Rash will move on. Nathan Bohr, unfortunately, will not. 2012 treating DP Dub very well so far. Nine straight strikes for the Hall of Famer and a little shout out to make my year. Match number two when we return. Traglia division has lost one member. 236, usually good enough to advance. Not with the strike power we have on display today. Pete Weber hasn't won since April 4th of 2010. Only made one TV appearance last season. Randy, what did you just see in that last match that has you excited about PD Dub? Well, he was able to be himself. He he likes to move in a little bit and kind of float it to the right with that nice, beautiful release and soft touch. But I think the most important thing was that he stayed ahead of the transition created by Sean Rash. Or at least it appeared that he did that. I mean, he, he flushed just about every shot. He shot 279. He had the highest game. And he was never in trouble. You never saw a moment where it looked like he didn't make the adjustment at the right time. So he dominated the right side on the left side of the lane. How about Ryan Simonelli, oh, by the way? Well, this kid's playing his A game. He's rocking, firing, he's throwing hard, he's rocking at the gutter, and he's got some friction built out there now. When you throw it that hard all the time, I think you're a little bit pressure proof. I think he's primed and ready to go after another, another chance to advance today. He dropped a 267, nine strikes, including eight in a row at one point. Sean Rash will lead us off here in match number two. A very quiet 257, if that's even possible. So much noise created by Weber and Simonelli. Rash kind of backed in there. And Boer couldn't close out the deal, and Sean starts strong. Yeah, he started strong the last game and lost it coming in and really ran the risk of not making it to this next game. If Nathan Boer shows up in the 10th frame and if he would have, have thrown that double and gotten nine, Sean Rash would have been eliminated. Uh-oh. Don't get on his bad side. One hundred and twenty-fifth career TV appearance for Pete Weber. Is that a typo? Not at all. Thirty-five career titles. Only two have one more. Eight majors, that's a lot. Looking for number nine. You know, we talked about it before. As long as he can stay ahead of the transition or the lane, or the oil pattern breakdown, he's got as good a chance as anybody. Simonelli, the lone southpaw. Leaves the seven. I'm not sure Pete's as feared as he used to be, but he certainly is respected as he's ever been. Yeah, especially when you start out with 279. You get a little respect when you do that. Go through it. Yes! 
Opening double Great for shot. Rash. The difference between staying with a shot and it gets through that little spot on the left and not. Simonelli with the spare and he knows Rash very well having competed against him in college and he feels like they were viewed as two of a kind. On the lanes you really can mistake confidence for cockiness and a lot of people just thought that we were just punks and that we thought that the best of ourselves and didn't care what anyone else thought. And it really isn't the case with us. We're really, we're good people and um, it just takes time to, to mold a personality and to become a, a man. And there's someone with no shortage of confidence, Pete Weber, trying to double up here in match two. He was voted number four on the PBA's 50 greatest bowlers all time in 2009. PD Dub, Simonelli, well, fearless today. He's up and down so fast. He almost has the same kind of follow through as the two handers do, where the, where the follow through goes to the right. That's a great point, Randy. He has a couple of different follow-throughs that he, that he uses at different times, depending on how he shuts his shoulders down. If he does it late, it comes across his body. If it's on time, it comes up through it. Rash with an opening three-bagger. Weber trying to duplicate the feet. What does that look tell you guys? I think that uh, look tells you that he stole one there. Although, I'm not really sure how bad it could have been because the ball ended up dead flush perfect. Well, whether he got away with one there or not, Pete has probably already moved on. It seems he's always thinking about what's next on and off the lanes. I think some guys are mm, too mental. I think they think way too much. Uh, See, when, I, when I'm, me, myself, when I'm off the approach, I'm thinking, uh, well, let's see, next week we're going to be somewhere else. There's a golf course there next week, you know. I don't think about bowling at all when I'm off the approach. Now when it's my turn to bowl and I get up and I, I stand there and I look at the lane and I, I vision my shot before I get up and throw it. So when I get on the approach and put the ball in my hand, I don't really stand there and think a whole lot because I've already seen it. I know what it's done. and it, and 32 years of experience, that, that kind of helps out a, a bit too. Sounds like a healthy way to handle business. Some good advice for some of the young guys out here on the tour. Simonelli trying to double up here in the third. Spare strike strike for Simonelli. Rash and Weber. Have struck out here through three. They're on top. Simonelli trailing by only 10. Top two move on. This was Weber's last effort. PD Dub thinks he might have stole one there. The Hall of Famer will take it. <laughs> Great look. The PBA World Championship is brought to you by GEICO, saving people money on more than just car insurance. By Roto-Grip, the fastest growing bowling ball brand in the world, Roto-Grip is king of them all. By Alka-Seltzer Plus, Alka-Seltzer Plus liquid gels provide more complete cold relief than NyQuil. And by Columbia 300, Columbia bowls the world over. 
PBA Hall of Famer Johnny Petraglia won the 1980 edition of what is known today as the PBA World Championship, a victory that made him only the second Triple Crown winner in PBA history. But it's the 1994 edition of the championship where he ultimately finished third that will always be known as his most memorable moment. In the semifinals against Walter Ray Williams Jr., Petraglia became only the seventh player in history to roll a perfect game on television, earning himself $100,000 for the effort. College is taken care of. I'm so happy. The kids can go to college. Everything's gravy from now on. <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? The kids can go to college. Mike Connor, uh, commissioner of the PBA. John, here's that $100,000 to help those college payments. Congratulations. And there's one of the two kids that benefited from that 300 game, Johnny Petraglia Jr. Great guy, and I believe right next to him on his right is his new fiance. Congratulations, guys. But even if this division of the World Championship is named after dad, guys, you still have to give the front row seat to the legend, Carmen Salvino. There's Carmen. Good look at section there. Rob Stone, Randy Peterson, Chris Barnes, welcome you back to Las Vegas. Our continuing coverage of the PBA World Championship. Gnarly, buddy. <laughs> Opening four bagger for Sean and some folks in the crowd. You just called it a four bagger again. It happens every once in a while. I have to appease the uh, the purists out there. A little early. Folks a uh, little over ambitious with their cheering for Rash. Weber trying to drop a ham bone of his own. <laughs> hey, Weber, there's no love for your boy over here. What but happened? We save it for the important moments. He knows. I got your shout out. I got your back, PD Dub. Hate it, hate it, love it. Another strike for Simonelli. Hit him thin and watch him spin is a term that I think the late great Billy Wait, Billy Waylu used to use. Coming up next week, it's the Albi Division of the PBA World Championship featuring the two-handed wonder from down under, Jason Belmonte. He'll be battling his good old buddy, Mike Bacon, as well as Josh Blanchard and Brian Kretzer for the last spot in the finals of the PBA World Championship. You can see it next week, 1 p.m. Eastern, with the finals coming in two weeks right here on ESPN. Thirteen combined frames here in this match, guys. Twelve strikes. And the other one wasn't bad. Simonelli's no. little flat seven pin in the first frame is all we've had. These guys are making a mockery of the scorpion pattern. Here's Weber, your number eight overall seed here at the PBA World Championship. Rash is the number one overall seed. He keeps on going. There's Simonelli looking for four in a row. Mm. I forgot to hand fall that one. That was the good one there. This one go just a little bit high. Three pin right around the six. She'll let him go to start with. Oh. 
Chris, what do you see there from Rash as we watch Simonelli take care of the spare? I think that was that shot where he was going to get it in too quick, and he felt it going in too quick. And uh, so instead of throwing the shot and throwing it by it for the two pin, the two ten, he uh, he regroups. in a row. How about this one? Watch the head pin as it goes to the cross and back. Oh, yeah. Bing. Bang. Bang. Boom. Boom. And that was your fast, safe pain relief replay brought to you by the makers of Bear Advanced Aspirin. You need breaks, particularly when you're bowling and hunting for a major. And that was a big one for Rash. He's perfect through six. Weber trying to do the same. Well, folks, you like high scores? In game one, the players averaged almost 260. Right now, we have two players that are perfect through six, and Simonelli, who can still shoot 269. My New Year's resolution was to only broadcast high-scoring bowling games. <laughs> Seeing it come through right now. What was your New Year's resolution, Randall? Uh, I didn't want to set up myself for failure again, so I don't have one. <laughs> Rash. Seven straight. All right, so where has this demeanor been? Kind of taking his time. He's not overly pumped. He looks like he's uh, kind of keeping his emotions in check for the most part. Well, he's being aided by a young man on the sideline as well. And that may be enough to keep Rash's focus in check. Seven in a row. For P. D. Dom. There's not a whole lot Simonelli can do in this one. Four strikes, two nine spares, and he's getting a run out of the building. Yeah, we're through seven frames, and right now it's already looking like Simonelli's not going to advance. I mean, I'm not trying to write the kid off just yet, but he's got 249 left. Yeah. And the other guys are already in the 250s. Eight. Great shot there. Rob, I think you made an excellent point. Having Danny in the crowd, I can only speak for myself, but my family's there. It gives me a little perspective, and it adds a little bit of calmness to the overall. There is Dan McCarty, eight, soon to be nine years old, battling brittle bone disease. And before the show began, Sean and Dan rolled out the first ball together. They met earlier this week here at the World Series of Bowling, part of a Brunswick function, and the two hit it off immediately, and he's wearing a Sean Rash jersey right now. Here's Pete Weber. Rash and Weber, perfect through eight. Hey, listen, not to jinx anybody. Simonelli with the strike. I think the worst thing that could happen to Weber is if he shot 300. Because emotionally, I don't think he, I, I don't think he would be able to put it back together for the final match. What about Rash? Uh, I think he'd have a little bit better go. Honestly, I mean, I've seen guys do it before. They pull 300, and then they have a little bit of a letdown. They're coming down off of this big, huge high. Hard to, to kind of properly know, channel the emotions. Grab, grab the rain, pull the reins back, yeah. you know, and agree. Oh. 
Looking for nine in a row. He's got it. He'll go to the tent, hunting perfection. Will Weber join him? It is official. This is a strike fest. Same pattern as last week? Yep. Different faces, though. Pin. Wow. What Randy, a run from Weber. I think that might be an excellent point. I think that might be the best thing that can happen to Pete right here. There. Let Rash make a run at 300 here, and he gets a frame to settle down and focus on what's next. I, I thought I made that perfectly clear. This is the best thing that could happen, this ringing 10 to no, Weber right here. Seltzer plus ball. I'm not sure Pete would agree, though. But I, I like the fact that you threw in Rash bowling 300. Because that kind of puts a little twist on, you know, where I was going with it. And it just adds to, I think it just kind of swings everything more in favor of Weber if that were to happen. Simonelli cleaning that one off in the ninth. All eyes focus on the man in yellow and black, the Wichita State Shocker colors. Sean Rash entering the 10th, three strikes away from perfection. Now well, we can get the 300 game out of our heads and move on to the final match here at the Pataglia Division. Weber was perfect through eight. Rash, perfect through nine. Those two will meet to see who advances to the January 15th PBA World Championship Final when we return to Vegas. Next Sunday, our fourth and final contestant for the first major of the year, the PBA World Championship, will be selected. Who will it be? Belmonte, Kretzer, Josh Blanchard from Wichita State, or Mike Fagan? One of those four will move on. Pete Weber and Sean Rash have moved on to our final match of the day. And look at those gaudy numbers, 278, 268. Huge match, too, from those two. And Randy standing by with Rash and Weber. Thanks, Rob. Sean, when uh, you had the front eight and Pete had the front eight that last game, what went through your mind? Well, after the first game there, we were all throwing a lot of strikes, and you just got to get off to a great start. And, you know, I'm just focusing on one shot at a time and trying to make the best possible shot possible. And, uh, you know, it was a great game for both of us. Now we're moving on and we'll see what happens. Did two 300 games ever cross your mind? At one point, uh, when we both had the front eight and Ryan missed in the eighth frame, it kind of, I thought, basically made both of our arm swings a little looser there in the ninth. Uh, unfortunately, Pete rung 10 in the ninth, and I threw it awful in the tenth. But, uh, you know, maybe we can both do it this game. Good luck on the final match. Thanks, Sean. Pete Weber, age 49, averaging 274 point whatever for the first two games. What has gotten into you? Well, uh, the last year I kind of went 0 for 6 out here, and I had a little something to prove this year, and I've gone 8 for 8 this year. And uh, arm swing's pretty loose. Confidence is high. He's got his hands full. What can we expect in the final match? I think you can expect a lot more strikes because, uh, I mean, it didn't look like we were slowing down any, so I'm pretty sure it's going to be a high-scoring match. And 250, 250 maybe, 270, 250, but it's better shoot a number to win. Thanks, Pete. Good luck. Rash and Weber combined for 19 strikes in match number two. They're set to tee it up with the berth into the PBA World Championship on the line. Rash, Weber on the backside.
he is the number one overall seed at this year's PBA World Championship, one of the most talented players on the tour. Yet Sean Rash hasn't won a title in more than four years, and some major gaps have cost him dearly. Now he faces a personal idol in PBA Tour legend Pete Weber. Will Rash be able to keep it together? It's a classic youth versus experience showdown to determine who moves on to the finals of the PBA World Championship. Welcome back inside the South Point Casino and Exhibition Hall. The Johnny Petraglia division about to be decided. And here are today's keys to victory brought to you by the makers of Alka-Seltzer plus liquid gels. And Chris, for Sean Rash, tempo, tempo, tempo. Highly excitable guy. If he gets going fast, he's going to throw it by it for the two pin. And of course, I came up with the keys for Weber. Don't change a thing. Why not? It's been working, right? A 279 and a 268 for that man, Pete Weber. First split we've seen of the day, I believe. Oh, yeah. Certainly from Weber. But the approach just gets sticky all of a sudden. Well, he sticks and misses it at the bottom, gets it going right with a little bit of speed, and it's a 210. Yeah, you're right, Rob. First split of the day. If you're going to have an open frame, that's the one to do it in. Yeah, not a bad place to do it. Four career tour titles for Sean Rash. <laughs> Messenger! Last title was a major. Rob, you and I covered it in Milwaukee. Miller Park, USBC Masters. October 28, 2007. I remember it very well. Yeah, baby, yeah! Come on! Yeah, baby, yeah! Rash celebrating with friends as well as his dad, Gene, and his future wife, Sarah. After that performance, guys, it was almost hard to imagine that he wouldn't win another title for at least four years. Take a look now at Sean's arsenal. He's currently throwing the strongest ball he has. That's the Nexus Solid. A 9.8 hook rating on a scale of 10. Two in a row to open up. Oh yeah, Dan likes it. Stay slow, slow down. You can hear it right there. That one was borderline. He got it in pretty quick. He saved it by really, oh, really planting that left foot in the ground and got it back to shake the five down. So Rash setting the tone early with an opening double. Weber, an open frame nine in the first. Through the nose. It's the 10 to drop late, three, but leaves the 3-6. Weber looks like he's lost rhythm. He mm -hmm. looks like he's out of sorts. He's lost rhythm. We didn't see him throw two shots, anything close to resembling the last two. He got around that early. Looks like he probably got the ball into the swing a little quick. Gets it to the bottom quick. And he barely makes the spare. He's got to somehow find a way. Ah. <sighs> to control this nervous energy here in this final match. Pete's using an anarchy. Very strong piece of equipment. As you can see by the hook rating. Still without a strike. Oh. <laughs> First time Rash and Weber have ever met face to face, mano a mano. John, a young man who has immense respect 
for what Weber has done through his career. Also, thinks very highly of the relationship Pete had with his late father and Man. Sean, very close to his dad, Gene, who's here in attendance and watching next to Sean's new wife, Sarah. You see Gene right there in the yellow, blue, and white, those two, great relationship. And boy, just to be able to have your dad with you here to, to watch you excel at this level, just, just must be awesome. Well, we saw some great scoring in the first two games, but obviously now the lane conditions, the old pattern is transitioning. The players are going to have to make big adjustments. Could be possible equipment changes in the near future, but things are going to have to change. Absolutely, Randy. I think both these guys are going to make a pretty good jump to the left now. They beat up that spot. They repeated very well, and now it's it's gone. Now we've got to get inside. If you go back to right, the man, last man. match and the, the scorecard, you know, we, we saw everybody, you know, Rash and Weber strike through the eighth, and Rash had one in the ninth, but there were a couple kind of shaky strikes there on the tail end, and then maybe a little sign of trouble to come here in the ninth and the tenth, and boy, things have really changed on the lanes. It was an absolute strike fest, and now these guys are, are getting some ugly strikes, if they're lucky. Kind of like that one, huh, buddy? You know what, though? If you're Pete Weber, this is not a bad thing to see. Obviously, nobody likes to see an opponent throw a Brooklyn strike. But the last two shots through the nose crossing over, when you see your opponent doing that, that's telling that's sending you a signal saying, hey, this guy's not exactly lined up. Join the PBA Facebook fan page and get and share some PBA news and photos of PBA stars. Click on the Facebook link on PBA.com right now to join. Here's the first adjustment. Here's a ball change right here coming at you. Rob Stone. Weber seeking his first strike here. We're in the fourth. That did not work. What happened? Holy cow. A lot more breakdown, a lot more transition than the players anticipated, Chris Barnes. Well, the one thing about going to a higher RG ball, the last time he threw this was probably in practice when the lanes were much tighter. Now when there's friction on the lane, higher RG balls, higher response. They hook even more off the friction. He got fooled. Stayed with it, able to clean it up. So Pete Weber, open frame nine in the first, eight spare, nine hmm. spare, six spare, down 24. Mocking celebration there from Pete. <laughs> Finally gets that strike in the fifth. Weber's won this title twice in 89 and 98, both times in Toledo. For Sean Rash, his best world championship finished third, and that came in 2010. Fourth strike in five frames for Rash. That's taking advantage of that Brooklyn in the third, or excuse me, the Brooklyn in the fourth. Lead bumps to 34. The key for Sean now is to stay focused on his keys and, and what he's trying to accomplish and not look at the score and the end result. That's a great point.
two guys know how to bring energy to the lanes, and Rash is just feeding off of it right now. Three in a row. Look at the start Weber had and where he has gone this match. Back-to-back -back jacks for Weber, and his only hope really right now, guys, has to be that Rash will somehow come unglued, and we've seen it before from this young man. We flash back to the 2009 World Series of Bowling. Big stage, air ball right down the middle. Single pin whiff. Yeah, oh he boy. delivered there in the clutch as well. Not a fun time at times. Sean Rash on the lanes. He put so much in, invested such a high level to get to these points, only to kind of crack when the TV lights came on. This is last season's PBA World Championship versus Chris Barnes in the semis at a critical Dad. juncture. Left that, but he's learning to deal with these breakdowns. You know, mentally, you can't control what you've done in the past. You know, you big four or you miss a single pin, which, which we're told we're not supposed to, but it happens. And uh, you got to think about the positives of, that are going on and, and move forward. And uh, the other thing that I used to do a lot of was I thought I could control others and worry about the scores and make that thing, you know, make that happen. And it's just something you can't do. You can only control yourself and, you know, make the best shot possible every time. He's been making good shots here in match number three versus Pete Weber. You see Pete picking up that ball. Remember that big ball change in the fourth for PD Dub. Things have improved slightly since then. And here is Weber. Top of the seventh, down 30 and change. Weber made that ball change in the fourth. Keep him honest. It was off to a questionable start, led to a six spare. Since then, though, three straight strikes. Which Sean Rash is going to respond? That's the question. It was interesting hearing Weber after that strike, essentially a clandestine, if you will, shout out to Rash, saying, hey, you know, you in the lane. that's here to make you show up, young man. You in the lane. These two guys know how to play the game off the lane as well. Pete, maybe one of the best ever. Without question. Doesn't phase Rash. That's a dialed in young man. Well, Sean's got a lot of pressure built up on him. He won his first four shows. He's gone now f nearly four years without a title. This wouldn't be a title but it would be a victory in some, some shorts and, and in a lot of ways by beating one of your idols on TV could go a long ways. Hasn't won since that USBC Masters in Milwaukee in 07. Made two TV appearances last season. Good shot. Ball drifts just a pinch high, leaving the four pin. And if you're Pete Great Weber, shot. that's exactly what you want to see. Your opponent slowing down just a bit. Two more strikes. Weber will be in the 220s. Sean Rash is in the 230s. And it's interesting to note, most of the players think the left lane is tighter down lane and haven't liked that Great lane shot. quite as well. The ones that hook it more. Sean thinks the right lane's tighter down lane and has chosen to finish on the left lane intentionally in all three games today. Randy, during your interview, it was interesting how Pete, talking about the motivation from the lack of success last season that he had, made just one TV appearance. His earnings second lowest in his career last season. He's out to prove something this year. The old man still has some fight left in him. Yeah, it's not time to change the dial or to turn the dial yet. 
big shot coming up here in the ninth frame. He goes with the ball change, as you mentioned, Rob, and so far it's the exception of the one shot in the fourth frame. It's worked perfectly. Started with anarchy. He is now throwing frantic. We may have a frantic finish here as Weber looks for five in a row as we begin the ninth. I really see what you're saying on that right lane be or the left lane being tighter down lane. You could really see it there. Much less down lane reaction on that shot than the previous shot on the right lane for Weber. Players see a little more friction in the front and it bails in the back. Sean with an immediate response in the night. Rerack, please. He was at a very critical juncture of this match. Coming off that nine spare, Weber with all that momentum with five straight and, you know, some of the naysayers out there could have said, oh, here's where we go. Here's where Sean is gonna fold. Here's where he's gonna collapse. And he steps up and drops a big one in the ninth. And with a uh, first strike in the 10th and eight spare, Sean Rash will lock this up and he will become another finalist. Uh, what a match for Dan McCarty to show up at. Well, Chris Barnes said it best. He said the keys for Sean Rash are tempo. One. He got fast here. Slow your body you can down. see how slick it is down lane on that left lane. And just the biggest break of the day. Still talking to himself. Slow yourself down. Slow yourself down. This isn't over yet. Sean's misses have not been four pins. Yeah, big split here. Weber could still punch out and win it. Nine on the first ball, he wins. There's your nine. Set. <laughs> You're a badass, but I want to have your position one day. I, I know, but come on, man. Hit the pocket when you need it. Hit the pocket when you need it. What do you say to that, yes! Chris? I think it all evens out over time. But it doesn't feel like it when you're on the other side of that one. Rash moves on. He wins the Johnny Petraglia division. 246, enough to drop Pete Weber. It was his low score of the day. Didn't matter in match number three. We'll hear from Rash when we return to Vegas. The PBA World Championship is brought to you by Barbazol. Start your day cool with new Arctic Chill Shaving Cream from Barbazol. Better buy Barbazol. By Jack Lynx. Jack Lynx beat jerky, beat your wild side. By Track. Evolutionary. Revolutionary. And Atani. Power up your game. Great ball. Maybe a little bit of the changing of the guard here today. 
Rash and Weber embrace and three down, one to go. Who will win the Mike Albee division? Find out with us next Sunday. Time now for our Geico Championship recap. Match number one. What a strike fest it was. Nathan Bohr, an incredible 236 performance. Wasn't enough. And he was eliminated. Ryan Simonelli, the southpaw from outside of Buffalo. Great performance, 219. Not enough, because Weber and Rash were lights out. Match three, Rash, a double to start it. And then a hand bone, four through seven. And that nice break, and he moves on 246 over 222. Randy standing by with Sean and a very special guest. Sean, congratulations. Uh, you got a really nice break there in the 10th frame. Describe what it feels like to be moving on to the finals. Well, I led this tournament by a couple hundred pins, and I felt like I should be bowling for the title to start with. And uh, I met my buddy Dan here a couple weeks ago before we started, and he's been an in inspiration all day long. And uh, I'm looking forward to the final match, and my buddy and I, we're going to bring home a title today. What was it like taking down the likes of a Pete Weber? Well, Pete and I go way back since I started on tour. He's been a great role model. You know, the people call him a badass, and you know, I'm trying, he always says I'm going to take over his spot. And uh, you know, we're, we're fierce competitors on the lanes. We're great friends off the lanes, just like we are with our fans. But uh, to take down a Hall of Famer like that, wow! What is a what a great position to be in. Dan, what did you think? I think um, Sean did really well, and. Um, did, took him down really well, and I think it was really good for him to take down the Hall of Famer, and I think he tried his best and did everything that he could. Well said, well said, Dan. Congratulations, guys. How about the instant analysis from Dan McCarty? Weber, not enough. Rash moves on. Who will join him? Belmo, Kretzer, Blanchard, Fagan. Find out next Sunday, 1 Eastern, right here on ESPN. Sean Rash, your number one overall seed, moves on to the final round of the PBA World Championship. For Randy and Chris, I'm Rob Stone. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports.